Does the color of the sky mean anything special to you? It does to me. A hell of a lot. When I close my eyes, the sky in my dreams is a deep, dark blue. Pilots have been in my family for four generations. Flying's in my DNA. Even so, my grandpa didn't want me joining the Air Force. He lost faith in the Ocean Air Defense the day my dad died in battle. You know, Abby, I wish you could see what it's like up there. Cruising above the clouds, the dark blue of the stratosphere. Nothing beats being at the controls and seeing it from the cockpit. Look here. Gramps tossed a magazine over to me with an article. Unmanned fighters are no longer a dream, it read. Pilots taking to the skies will soon be a distant memory. I don't see anything good coming from that. Know what? Lying smack dab in the middle of the desert west of here, there's a bunch of planes from the last war. Some of them have been mothballed, but most of them are just rusted piles of junk waiting to be scrapped. Gramps was really good friends with the super there, so he got to take whatever he wanted, no questions asked. That's how we got the parts to build our own plane. Now, when I say we, I mean me, my grandpa, and his old war buddies. I cut my teeth working with those geezers. They taught me their skills and some dirty jokes. But with their aging eyeballs and whatnot, I ended up having to do most of the work myself. I was at the airstrip doing some flight training when I saw it. A prototype drone. It wasn't much of a plane, more of a trash can with wings. Laugh at it all you want, kid. But technology's always changing. If you don't keep up with it, it'll leave your ass behind. It took six years and eight months to get that engine running. And it took us another year and a half after that to finally get the balance of the airframe just right. I'd gone from being a little girl to, well, still a girl, just older. But now, I was all alone. <sighs> Wherever the souls of my Gramps and his pals are flying, I hope it's peaceful. Then, finally, I was ready to break the sound barrier. All this plane could do was take off, accelerate, and fly up. fighters. They were tailing something. A drone. 
They were going full out chasing that thing. Doing 30 Gs at least. Damn, I've never seen anything move that fast. It had a rose painted on it. The Erusian emblem. But that country's a whole continent away from here. Crap. It should have been my best to be a piece of junk. Should have built a deterrent too. Is everyone here? Settle down. I said settle down. You have all been instrumental in helping to maintain peace in Yuzha as members of the International Union Peacekeeping Force. Until today. Earlier, our radar site informed us that a group of unidentified aircraft was approaching. Communication systems went down immediately afterwards. We are led to conclude that they have attacked the site. Here's your mission. It's possible that the Yuzhen ceasefire agreement has been broken for the first time in over a decade. As of today, the Fort Gray's Air Base Squadron of the IUPF has been put on high alert. All members who have been ordered to sortie fly there immediately. Find the unidentified craft, then use your weapons to round them up and force them to land. If the hostiles counterattack, then you will. What the hell was that? There's smoke! We're under attack. Numerous unidentified aircraft confirmed overhead. What? How is that possible? The tank farm to the north has been bombed. Many injured. Scramble. All units, take off and eliminate the unidentified craft attacking the base. This is not a drill. Squadron, aircraft preparations complete. Stand by at the front. Radar sight still silent. Scramble. Get those birds in the sky. We're sitting ducks. What's happening? Bombers incoming. Don't know how many. Let's clear that runway. We don't got all day here. Main squadron, head to runway. Column squadron, take off. Link to Skykeeper. Hurry, main squadron. Trigger, your call sign is...
Ryan Wheat back. Page two, clear for takeoff. The situation is tight. It's a hell of a welcoming party, but we have faith in you. Good luck. Control, do me a favor and get that bird in the air ASAP. Hear that? Column squadron and your wingmen are airborne. Take off and form up with Page one. Page two, altitude restriction is lifted. Good luck. The carrier? Whoa, looks like the harbor's taken a lot of damage. Can't have any more casualties. Time to stop the bullshit. Mage 2, form up with Mage 1. All aircraft, let's do this. Golem Squadron, it's go time. Roger that. Golem 4, understood. This is the AWACS Skykeeper. Take down all unidentified bombers. They don't have many escorts. They hit our radars hard in the last attack. Expect the worst and stay sharp. We'll go. Trigger, I'm your wingman. You fly with me now. That's what it means to be in an element. You gotta keep an eye out for enemy bombers. Okay, here we go. Looks like bombers have been located. It's showtime, Trigger. Let's see if you can handle the spotlight. You're a good pilot, or so I told them. I had to fill an empty spot, so play along. It's still a leash, though. Bomber confirmed down. Good job, Mage 2. Not bad, Mage 2. Trigger, switch your radar. See if you can locate the enemy.
Not too shabby, Mage 2. But you still got a long way to go, kid. I'll give you some pointers back at base if we can make it in one piece. Skykeeper, this is Mage 1, over. Tally two bandits. Copy that. It's a bomber and an escort. Oh, their trigger. Settle down. Mage 2, maintain your element with Mage 1. Do not break off. Mage 1, make sure he doesn't do anything stupid. Welcome. Call him 2, let's maintain element. Copy that, Commander. I've got your six covered, sir. Radio.
entusiasmo. Trigger your call sign is page two. Verify and read back. Page two, clear for takeoff. Your situation is tight. It's a hell of a welcoming party, but we have faith in you. Good luck. Control. We are currently assessing the damage to the base. We have confirmed that the aircraft carrier Albatross was sunk. We know the attacking bogies were from Arusia. International Union peacekeeping force bases all over the Yuzhin continent were attacked in the same way. The damage is severe. Many wars are lost by failing to recover from the opening blows. That means successfully retaliating was very important. You may have turned the tides of battle here. You have our thanks. As of 1 p.m. today, the Kingdom of Erugia has declared war on the Ocean Federation. As soon as the news broke out, enemy aircraft began bombing Ocean territory, causing widespread destruction. The Air Defense Force has released a statement saying this violent attack was carried out by drones. They speculate the drones were secretly transported to Osea in shipping containers and launched remotely. The Secretary of the Navy has stated that the enemy was targeting naval ports across the country. According to the Secretary, all of the nation's aircraft carriers, including one still under construction, sustained severe damage in the attacks. We have yet to hear back from the Department as to the fate of Ocean carriers currently at sea. Hold on. I've just received breaking news. The International Space Elevator, which is being built in southern Yuzha, has been seized by the Erusian Army. Reports say former President Harling was touring the site at the time, but his current whereabouts are unknown. Our sources in government tell us it was Harling's policies regarding the space elevator that caused economic frictions in the area, and which ultimately led to this war. Located near Erugia, on the continent of Yuzha, the space elevator has been under construction for some time now. The Executive Office of the Ocean Federation has declared a national state of emergency. They have ordered all its armed forces, including Yuzhin peacekeepers, to mobilize and make the necessary preparations to launch an immediate counterattack. Ladies and gentlemen, our country is officially at war. Stay tuned for further updates. Breaking news from ENN. Osea launched an attack on the capital today, striking Farbanti from their aircraft carrier, the Kestrel II. After a brutal battle, the Erujian Air Force successfully repelled them. During the air raid, the Ocean Air Force fired missiles at the city and managed to shoot down a number of Erujian fighters. Some of the disabled planes then crashed into residential areas. The world was screwed. Twenty years ago, the Earth got slammed by an asteroid. Yuja was on the wrong side of the planet and got hit. Hard. Refugees swarmed the Erujian Republic, the biggest country on the continent, plunging it into chaos. They were desperate and started a war, one they had no hope of winning. That's the war my dad fought and died in. The biggest nations from two continents went head to head, and the so-called righteous Oceans struck the deal that ended it. They fancied themselves the only nation that could bring peace and stability to the world. They even tried saving the Yuzhins, still suffering from the disaster. That's how a space elevator, stretching way up into the sky, ended up being built in Yuzha, paid for by the Oceans. President Harling said he did it out of compassion for his fellow humans. 
But to the folks in Erugia, it looked like Osea was moving in to take over. Erugia went from being a republic back to being a kingdom. When they started this new war, they managed to get the drop on everyone. The second the declaration hit the news, Erusian forces took control of the space elevator without spilling a single drop of blood. President Harling was touring the elevator when it happened and disappeared. Then, while that was going on, the Erusian ships that were docked all around Osea released a swarm of drone fighters they had hidden on board in containers. No one thought they were capable of doing what they did that day. With pinpoint accuracy, they managed to take out everything that was military, and not a single civilian was hurt in the process. Osea pissed lots of people off with their huge military presence around the world. Erugia didn't have the same reach, but they could hit their targets faster and cleaner. And when all this was going down, I just so happened to be in my flying drag racer. In case you were wondering, yeah, I survived. I crashed in a bombed-out Ocean Air Force Base, then got arrested for breaking wartime aviation laws or some crap. The world went from being at peace to being at war, all in the blink of an eye. I was tried, found guilty, and stuffed into a cargo ship. For company, I had some court-martialed soldiers. And remember those mothballed planes I told you about before? They were loaded on the ship, too. We headed off down south for several days, and then swung east. That's how I got here. I was thousands of kilometers from Arusia, on the opposite side of the Yuzian continent. For a port, it was dull as hell. It had three rusty patrol boats. And the base? The fences were topped with razor wire, the tower had a searchlight and machine guns, and a truck with a gun turret was parked in front of the gate. Its gun was aimed at the yard. This was a prison. This place looked like a full-on base, but half the tanker trucks were just big balloons, and the runways weren't even paved, just painted on the dirt. The whole place was just one big, fat lie. The only reason I was here is because they knew I'd restored a supersonic plane. They wanted me to make something out of the mothballed planes they brought, that they could park on the fake runway. Can you believe that shit? So, I tried to escape. <laughs> they found out. <laughs> and set the dogs on me. Eruja has made a declaration to the Ocean Federation and all countries on the Yuzhen continent stationing the IUN Peacekeeping Force that we are now at war. Right after the declaration was made, surprise attacks began around the continent that have inflicted major damage to our armed forces. Forces aligned with Eruja are currently appearing throughout Yuzhen. The combination of these forces has overwhelmed the majority of the continent, and they are now encroaching on us in the east. Additionally, the multinational space elevator has been seized by the Erusian military. After the previous war, the space elevator became both a symbol of peace and a valuable asset in the fight against growing energy concerns. Whoever has control of it will have enormous influence over the entire continent. We cannot turn a blind eye to this critical situation. The Fort Gray's Air Base Squadron has been entered into the order of battle to reclaim the elevator as an advanced element. First, you will attack all hostiles coming in the east of Schofield Plateau to stop any interference with the Allied ground troops. The 
The enemy has deployed several vehicles equipped with anti-air radar along the roads. You are to destroy them. They should not pose much of a threat. However, there is a high likelihood that the attack will draw more enemy air support. If that happens, fight them off swiftly and establish air superiority. Squadron 30, ASAP. Current target is on rails, but there's still military vehicles and anti-air weaponry. Destroy the target, but HQ has made it clear that no harm should come to civilians and no damage is to be done to public facilities. But, uh, any aircraft shot down could land in civilian territory. No point arguing. That's how war is these days. Do you have visual on the anti-air radar vehicles? They should be close. Off now, 
Three targets remaining. Pile of scrap. Enemy transport destroyed. 
Bombs are free. Whenever you're ready. Stand clear, 15 meters. UAV is ready to launch. Away! on radar. They're close. Wait, they're being launched. You're clear to engage. They're probably hostile. On. Judging by the way they look and move, they gotta be drones. Well spotted, Cloud. No doubt about it, we're dealing with UAVs. But that doesn't change a thing. Just think of them as somewhat clever decoys. Take them all down. These drones have great agility. All aircraft. You know what high G turns are, right? Use them. HQ, this is Golem 1. Bandits confirmed as UAVs. Repeat, bandits are drones. Golem 1, that doesn't matter. Destroy all enemy fighters and get out. It doesn't matter? You say it's war can change in an instant. Get over it. Yeah, I just wish they'd give us a bit in that party. Enemy UAV confirmed destroyed. Hey, 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 Golem Squadron, you're not gonna let Mage get all the glory, are ya? Take care of the rest. No harm. 
harm should come to civilians and no damages to You've given us air superiority by destroying their radar. The first barrier keeping us from retaking the space elevator is gone. Now is the time to group up and begin the counteroffensive. Let us reclaim what is ours. Surprise attacks carried out after the declaration of war saw the peacekeeping forces of various countries, including Osea, suffer major damage. The ships moored around the space elevator and near Gandar Bay have been hit particularly hard. Numerous ships have been sunk and abandoned. Fortunately, our cutting-edge aircraft carrier Kestrel II was at sea, so it was spared from the attack. Kestrel II is now preparing to launch another attack against Arugia's capital, Farbanti. The aircraft carrier Vulture also managed to escape Gandar Bay safely. However, it lost all its aircraft, so it's sailing empty. Today, the International Union Peacekeeping Force reclaims its bid to the space elevator. The Fort Gray's Island Air Base Squadron will rendezvous with the carrier Vulture for a joint mission. The first objective will be to seize air superiority in Choppenburg in order to secure a route for the support squadrons. The enemy maintains air superiority over Choppenburg, so expect heavy resistance from enemy aircraft. There's more, so listen carefully. Right from the start of the war, the enemy has been deploying drones. They're using a new advanced type of drone. The unmanned airborne aircraft carrier, the Arsenal Bird, carries this new drone. MQ-101. The Ocean Army headed up the development of the massive arsenal birds and dispatched them to the space elevator to provide support. However, it's been reported that the carriers may have fallen into the hands of the Erujian forces. If that's true, it could be a significant obstacle for us. We need to regain control of the space elevator ASAP. Good luck out there.
Engage squadron. Aircraft preparations complete. Squadron, this is the situation. Gollum and the other base's squadrons already joined forces and are engaged. You guys will arrive right in the middle of the action. Mage Squadron, eliminate all bandits in the current airspace. We have the upper hand, but that doesn't mean we can ease up. Good luck. Mage One, we'll go. Thank your lucky stars. Looking good, Mage Squadron. Keep up that pressure. Trigger time to show the other guys that we can wet wild and do dirty, dirty things. Once you hit one of them, stick to them like blue. Don't let them out of your sights, even in the clouds. And so, your first hunting season begins. Don't let those jerks in your kill. Cool reinforcements, we're taking too much damage. Sign of bandits. You're in the clear. Woohoo! I haven't even broken a sweat. 
Gargoyle 1, escort column 2. Continuing the mission. Still got my wings. Trigger doesn't need to fill in for me. I'm back and I... You won't make any difference up here. Get back to base and cool your head. Copy that. Returning home. You're almost out of special weaponry. our odds of getting out of here are. Machines don't get tired. Main squadron, you're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the UAVs. Good work. Retreating aircraft, leave the AO. Allies will hold off pursuit. Column squadron, main squadron, hang in there and come back safe. H2, UAV down. No one in my sights. Yowza! This one's mine. Let a boy, Mage 2. Mike, just keep firing. This is where we lost. More UAVs spotted. Gargoyle Squadron, they might cut off your retreat. My status is fine. Affirmative. This is Gargoyle 1. Leading Operation Airspace with Column 2. Retreating aircrafts, prepare for combat. It's a bogey. Gargoyle 1, Golem 2, engage now. Attack. One bad. This is 30. Gargoyle 1, caution, missile! Ah, uh, Skykeeper, Gargoyle 1 lost. What the hell? Golem 2, status report. <laughs> Just talk to me. I'm against an SU-30. Shake it off. It's matching me move for move. Golem 2, stop dogfighting and run. Uh. Wait, I can't get off. Missile away. Going for the loader. That's it, Trigger. They're machines. Don't show them any mercy.
I said what I had to say. About what? I'm not a girl who'd retreat. Just not in her DNA. That was the right decision at the time. No, I should have never let a fledgling like her out of my reach to begin with. Gollum Squadron, Maid Squadron, withdraw. and are, you guys will arrive right in the middle of the action. Unfortunately, the two-front offensive was a failure. The aircraft carrier Kestrel II was sunk during the attack on Farbanti. Carrier-borne aircraft mistakenly bombed urban areas, and this has turned public opinion in neutral countries against us. Our own forces also suffered heavy losses. If it weren't for a few extraordinary fighters, many of us wouldn't have made it home. The situation is grim. We have precious little time, however. We have to get to the space elevator. God he has his granddaughters here to help him out. Their sisters, 15 and 10. Engaging the enemy in combat so we could use his physiological data to improve the drones had always taken a toll on Mihai's body. But today, he was really showing his age. The drones we based on his data were being taken down at a faster rate now compared to when the war began. When Mihai found that out, he insisted on flying to the front lines to see it for himself. Sometimes he could be so stubborn. His age wasn't the only thing affecting his health. Over the years, flying at high altitudes for prolonged stretches of time had ravaged and poisoned his body. But he was a man of grit. Today, after 28 years, he saw combat again. 
If his flight suit still wasn't good enough to protect him, I can't imagine how many G's he hit today during the battle. As a pilot, he exceeds all our expectations. It's going to take a bit more tweaking before our drones can match his skill. How penal is this penal unit, you ask? This place is a shithole. If you took the stink of all the corruption in the world, then corralled it all in one place, that would give you a pretty good idea of what the air smells like around here. We got all kinds of critters, too. Everything from flea-ridden guards, rabid dogs, and a mechanic doing a stretch for life. I can't forget the rats. Yeah, we got those. And some pilots who got their wings clipped, too. One's a great pilot, but a lousy thief. One's a gambler with no luck. And one's an anarchist with no balls. Their job here was to rev the engines on the fake runways. The idea was for Arusha's spy satellite to pick up the heat sig. Even though there weren't any real fighters here, it looked like it on their infrared. I bet you're wondering, if Arugia lost the war, how come they still have a spy satellite? Because someone over there was smart enough to train a bunch of computer nerds to hack into half of Osea's satellites. That's how come. Every now and again, I'd try to bust out. And every single time, those damn dogs would drag me right back. When I was in my cell, I'd hear this voice coming from the guards' room. It was the Erusian princess rallying her people on the Erusian national broadcast. All us prisoners had become big fans of hers. You want to hear something funny? The guards were big fans too. I swear to God, every time she was on the air, they'd turn up the volume on the radio and sit there listening. I could see how someone like her could win the hearts and minds of soldiers and workers alike. When the princess said something, you could tell she meant every word. Lately, she'd been having more fun with her speeches, and that made her seem even more charming. You could say her charm was like a virus. Whenever she'd point out stuff that was wrong with Osea, the prisoners in here went nuts. Hell, if anyone knew how messed up Osea was, it was the prisoners. They'd shout, burn Osea down. No way am I just gonna sit here and rot away in this hellhole. Dark blue. Instead of building fake-ass planes to trick Arusha, I'm gonna build one that'll really take off. You can count on that. As proved by the failure of our previous strategy, the Arsenal Birds have bolstered the enemy's anti-air network. This will be difficult to overcome. However, we still need to get swiftly to the space elevator no matter what it takes. Someone there is counting on us. The hero of the Circumpacific War and the man who spearheaded the construction of the space elevator. Osea's former president, Mr. Harling. Mr. Harling was inspecting the elevator when the war broke out. He's been classified as missing since the elevator was taken over by the Erusian forces. However, according to the latest intel, a military officer accompanying Mr. Harling hid him inside the facility. Both are waiting for a chance to escape. Enemy anti-air radar network has been set up around the space elevator. It's likely a large squadron would be detected. We'll send a single aircraft through the network and send in a rescue team soon after. A number of anti-air radars have been set up around the space elevator. However, our reconnaissance suggests their network is weakest along the southeastern coast of Selatapura, so we can elude the enemy's observation. There are a lot of rain clouds this time of year. Flying through the clouds will enable us to stay hidden from their radar. If you happen to be detected by their radar, we will be forced to abort the mission. The lone pilot will head up this strategy as you, Trigger. After you bust through, secure the rescue craft's landing zone by taking out the anti-air weapons. Gollum and others will arrive shortly for support. Provide escort for Mr. Harling's craft after rendezvous. 
Good luck out there, everyone. Aircraft preparations complete. Sortie ASAP. Operation area, imposing radio silence. We'll radio you, but you are not permitted to make contact. If you're spotted, the mission is over. Stay out of enemy radar. Use of weaponry is also strictly forbidden. Okay, you're heading up the Harling rescue mission. The success of this mission depends on you. Good luck. clouds.
point. Good job, but stay focused. you can take up here. Just go with your gut. Don't worry. We're watching over you.
Titan launch. Status report. How can anything slip through our anti-air radar net? Increasing alert. The first stage of the mission is clear. Don't celebrate yet. The real fight's about to get started. Radio silence is now lifted. The auxiliary craft will be arriving shortly. Destroy the anti-air around the space elevator. We're securing Sea Goblet's landing zone.
half of the anti-air guns down.
UAV confirmed down. UAV is moving away from the harbor toward the space elevator. Shoot them down. All UAVs have been splashed. All aircraft. Former President Harling's transport is ready to take off. Mother Goose One, take off. Let's wait till we're home safe. Mage Squadron, Mother Goose One is heading south. Provide support. Five minutes remaining. Skykeeper, bogey's on my radar. Bearing 220. Sighting confirmed as MQ-101, forerunner for Arsenal Bird. The big bird is coming, huh? Mage, protect Mother Goose One. Shoot down any UAVs. Gollum, intercept the UAVs. Golem 1 will kill. That last battle taught me a lot about those a-holes. Golem 2, don't stray off on me. Always maintain element. Wilco, forming up! South. Provide support. Five minutes remaining. Skykeeper, bogey's on my radar. Bearing 220. Sighting confirmed as MQ-101, forerunner for Arsenal Bird. The big bird is coming, huh? Mage, protect Mother Goose 1. Shoot down any UAVs. Gollum, intercept the UAVs. Last battle taught me a lot about those a-holes. Golem 2, don't stray off on me. Always maintain element. Buko, forming up! Nice kill, Mage 2. Enemy UAV down. Keep up the good work. Mage 2, missile launch. Roger. Set for the transport. Orders are to fire Golem warning. Three. Old timer, as no Mother Goose 1, UAV on your tail. Take evasive action. I hear you. But this isn't exactly a fight. Call warning. Understood. An arsenal bird is on its way. Strategic AI chose liberty over justice. Courses have already changed. Missile incoming! Enemy on my six. Mage 2, down any UAVs near Mother Goose 1. Mother Goose 1 has been shot down. Mage Squadron, Mother Goose 1 is heading south. Provide support. Five minutes remaining. Bogey's on my radar. Bearing 220. Sighting confirmed as MQ-101, forerunner for Arsenal Bird. The big bird is coming, huh? Mage, protect Mother Goose 1. Shoot down any UAVs. Gollum, intercept the UAVs. Golem 1 will kill. That last battle taught me a lot about those a-holes. Golem 2, don't stray off on me. Always maintain element. Buko, forming up! Mother 
Defense One, UAV on your tail. Take evasive action. I hear you. This isn't exactly a fighter. Understood. An arsenal bird is on its way. Strategic AI chose liberty over justice. Forces have already changed.
target was not struck. Mother Goose One hit. Mother Goose One has been hit. Colonel Johnson, respond. Aid Squadron, assess the situation. This is Mage One. I have Mother Goose One in my sight. The cabin's fine, but the cockpit's not looking so good. Colonel Johnson, are you okay? One has been shot down. Where'd the missile come from? Mage 2 fired that. It was Ocean. A friendly missile hit him. Verifying the situation. Stop speculating. Friendly fire. I saw it. Mother Goose 1 exploded in air. No one could have survived. Looks like it tried to protect the elevator. Arusian bastards, they just killed a hero. Mage 1. Was it Trigger? <sighs> Trigger was the closest. UAVs were crawling all over our objective. I told you to keep a goddamn eye on the hatchling. It must have been a mistake. Arsenal Bird is entering. All aircraft withdraw immediately. Trigger, you can't fly for a while. You understand? The operation to rescue former President Harling has failed. Sadly, there is no hope he survived. Trigger, you are suspected of assassinating a former president. There will be an inquiry. There will most probably be a court-martial. Bad news for us here at the prison. The enemy fell for our decoy base. With all the fake planes and trucks we had out, it must have looked to them like the Ocean Air Force was about to go on the attack. Day after day after day after day, they bombed us. Osea didn't give a damn. We weren't soldiers to them, so go ahead, bomb us. In their eyes, we were expendable, worth less than the fake planes in the bunkers. No biggie. While I made fake planes, they had me put together some working ones. Then, some genius at HQ decided we should send it up, so the base looked legit. Thankfully, we had people to crew them. It didn't matter what we were locked up here for anymore. Top brass needed pilots, and criminals were all they had. A crook, a gambler, an anarchist. Just your typical lowlifes. They threw each one of them in a cockpit and sent them up to intercept the enemy's planes. But in the end, it was all just for show. So, up they went, day after day after day. 
Today they toss someone new into the mix. Wonder what he did to get sent here. My dad died flying for the Ocean Air Force. When your allies are surrounded, one of the most dangerous missions is giving them cover to retreat. Whoever signed up for that was a real hero. But even more dangerous than that was being the one who had to cover the rear guard's retreat. That was my dad's job, and one time, he called it off. Said it was too late for him. Said anyone else would have done the same. I found that out from a war buddy of his when he came to tell me how my dad died. The next time a retreat happened, my dad volunteered to be in the rear guard. Dumbass. He died all right. No one came to help. The news nearly broke me. Of all the ways to get killed, that's got to be the most pathetic one ever. Am I right? There's a rumor going around about another inmate. A guy they brought here a little while ago. Get this. Talk in the cell block says he was sent here because he killed Harling. The president of Osea during the last war, remember? He's the one that sent my dad on that suicide mission. He's the reason I had to go live with my grandpa. And why me and Gramps started building a supersonic jet. He's the reason I ended up here. Maybe I should give that guy a thank you note for killing him. Nah. God, I hate the smell of this place. It's all fake and lies and bullshit. It reeks. All right, guys, I'll let you in on some juicy info. The new guy was found guilty by the International Union Peacekeeping Forces Court Martial. He is the murderer of Harling in the flesh. His tack name's Trigger. Now, as of today, he may be attached to the Ocean Air Force Base 444th Squadron. But that is just some symbolic bullshit. It doesn't really matter if he's Harling's murderer or not. Every last one of you has been incarcerated for one reason or another. You cons have an obligation to atone for your crimes. A few of you in the penal unit know how to fly, and HQ needs to plug the deficit in our Air Force. So they proposed sending you guys on a reconnaissance mission to the Waipolo Mountains. But that idea was flat out rejected. Nope. You'll be atoning for your crimes right here at this base. This base is a decoy designed to draw enemy fire. And as members of this base, you'll be taking hits from the enemy. This will allow our forces to safely prepare a counterattack. Incoming! Switch off that alarm. It's just the usual. I thought Zapland was supposed to be an isolated area. Okay. I'm gonna need a few aircraft to scramble. Solitary. Enemy aircraft detected over the dummy runway. We just need to make it look like we can put up a fight. Some of those piles of junk can at least take off. Let's get the guiltiest cons in the sky first. We'll start with Harling's murderer. We don't expect you to down any bombers. But what we do want is to make them think that we've got an active base here.
Time to get busy, convicts. Proceed with your mission now. Follow orders, Trigger. Taxi to the runway now. Check your altimeter and wait in front of the runway. Control, would you kindly send me up first? Spare A, Champ, this is the control tower. You're not cleared for takeoff. Obey orders. Go to hell. All aircraft preparing for takeoff. Watch out for Spare A. He's forcing a takeoff. I'll take up command. Any objections? That'll get decided in the skies. <laughs> Too shit. Trigger your call sign as spare 15. Consider it your prisoner number for the air. Commencing deception and interception. Spare 15, the runway's free. You have permission to take off. Go now. My blood's boiling! Toss the chump in solitary once he gets back. Spare 8, when you land, your ass is grass. Spare 15, take off confirmed. Altitude restriction lifted. Go. So, no missiles again. The FCS is locked. Damn. You're good. Let's make this more interesting. Prisoners use nothing without supervision. Not even a pencil. <laughs> Here comes Harling's murderer. He shot two missiles right between old Harling's eyes. Yeah. Always in the know, aren't you? <laughs> in this war, intel is a life or death matter. Settle down. Excited to have another murderer with you? Yeah. This is Bandog. Spare 15, I'm handling surveillance. The bombers that attacked the runway are coming back for another round. I know it's just a dummy runway. You guys just need to make a lot of noise. Make them think there's fighters at the base. Anyone got a smoke? I'll owe you one. If any of you die, just think of it as you atoning for your crimes. Much appreciated. <laughs> one more thing. Any aircraft leaving the operation area will be shot down. You hear me? Righto. Going three, this is Spare One. Numbers will get handled. We're safe with us. Squirrel Squadron, get into formation.
Radar pinged. Incoming hostile group detected. Take care of them. Righto. A bomber's at high altitude. Stop watching your own asses and look up. We're losing escort. Hurry it up. Finish the job and let's get out. No, only one of us killed. Enemy sighted. Head to the next target. Allow me to educate you. In this unit, you get your tail marked with scratches. The more scratches, the more heinous the crime. They're called sin lines. You have three scratches, right, Trigger? Well, you are Harlan's murderer. We're cut off. We can't break away. We can't. Oh, God. Where the hell are we out here? Nickel. 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 A monkey can do this work. Nickel. Anyone up for some poker tonight? Nickel. Do they really think they can get a bunch of convicts to just put on a show? Missile. 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 Missile.
special weaponry out. Two targets remaining. Why in the world would someone make a squadron of convicts? Gotta be some kind of reason. Now the paper mache strategy at the base seems to be doing the trick. Because every man and his dog has an idea how to end the war. Get on their ass if you want to score! Visual on target. Prepare for bombing run. Bingo! Good going! That cheers me up! Pipe down and keep your mind on the mission. I want it back! One bandit left. Take him down now. First come, first serve. Stand by for your next sortie. I lost a lot of money for that trigger. Don't forget. Spare 15, the runway's free. Did I say you could take down the enemy? Throw anyone who disobeys into solitary. Mihai's granddaughters like to keep to themselves mostly. They were well behaved and possessed a sort of quiet elegance. From time to time, I'd catch myself looking at him, wondering what they were talking about. I'm sure everyone on the base did the same. They were such enthralling creatures. Every night, a crowd would gather around Mihai. They were the men tasked with guarding him in the air. Their jackets all bore the same patch, a relic from a nation that was long gone. Decades ago, during the Age of Expansion, the Kingdom of Erugia absorbed many countries. Theirs was one of them. Mihai asked them, Yet what is a nation? Can we actually see the physical lines that divide one from another? People of my generation can no longer speak the language of our homeland. My grandparents always look sad when they see I have no idea what they're saying to me. Mihai didn't say a word after that. His scarred face betrayed no emotion. He didn't get those scars from flying, though. Mihai was originally from Shilaji. His real name is Mihai Dimitru Margarita Cornelio Leopold Blanca Carol Aeon Ignatius Rafael Maria Nikitas A. Shilaji. When he was young, 
He was the heir to the Grand Duchy of Shalaji. Then, revolution broke out among his people. Mihai was betrayed by a close friend who pointed a gun at his face and pulled the trigger. The revolution was successful, but the new country that sprang from it was annexed by the expanding kingdom of Arusia. The Arusian royal family allowed Mihai's family to retain their title and noble standing in the new kingdom. But Mihai surprised them all by signing up for the draft like an ordinary Arusian citizen. He was then accepted into the Air Force Academy by order of the king. Mihai soon became an ace pilot. When the royal family was ousted and Arusia became a republic, he continued his service for the new regime. Test sites soon flourished. One day, a classmate of Mihai's granddaughter visited. I noticed the rose emblem. She laughed like a princess, and I found out later she was indeed the daughter of Arugia's new ruler. She was the connection to the royal bloodline everyone was looking for the one to restore the monarchy. This new princess was truly a godsend for the Erujian people. If Mihai's granddaughters were like the moon, she was like the sun, around which everything seemed to orbit. Her face was so expressive, it's no wonder the people of this war-torn country instantly felt at ease when they saw her speeches. They started singing. The pilots of the support plane smiled, even though they wished their nation were independent from hers. Angelic. I wonder how Mihai felt about all of this. It was my job to research his neurological data, after all. I wish I could figure him out. Whatever his feelings were about losing his homeland, he kept hidden, even from me. Your mission is to atone for your crimes by attracting the enemy's attention. First, I want you to head from the base to the desert region of Roca Roja to the northwest. And then second, you will attack the large Arusian base there. We've been unable to verify that base's ability to deal with fighters. You will attack and provoke the enemy into revealing their AA strategy. Get them to fire at you as much as you can. That way, we can confirm where they're firing from. Then it's a case of sending in our regular force to clean them out. For this mission, we prepared a frontline base that can be used for ammo replenishment and aircraft repairs. However, this is not for you guys. Only the regular force has permission to use it. Even if you run out of ammo, don't forget that you're just decoys. You stay out there as targets for the enemy. Aircraft preparations complete. Stand by at the front.
some welcome. All aircraft, spread out and attack. We're clear to attack, right? I heard the regular forces were gonna clean things up. It's just like before. We blow the shit out of everything. Sharp as attack, aren't you, Spare Aid? Regular forces can reduce losses if you tenderize the base first. If you can't handle that, just fly and be a target. <laughs> Some have air power, so their threat levels vary. Think of the best way to rob them of their ability to respond. Use those empty heads of yours. If you die too fast, you won't even be useful as targets. Transport truck spotted. Not a threat, but feel free to take them out. Kind of specialty of mine. The fire set off a chain reaction. At least stop it from spreading. What are the odds of getting out alive? That's for you to figure out, Spare Seven. Any regular aircraft that joined later needing any repairs or ammo will fly over the return line. However, you guys do not have that luxury. So, what are we supposed to do? I'm out. Returning to resupply. How are we supposed to work without ammo? I'm heading back. Nice try. This stuff isn't for you guys. Let's be honest here. The regulars like us aren't allowed to resupply. But in your heart, you want us to smash that base, my arm? <sighs> You're gonna wish this mission never ended. Looks like bad dogs finally come around. I have two first target for confirmed destroyed. Stop ammo. Target 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 Push two. Enemy has a lock. Locked on target. Locks two. Landed on your six. Watch it. Target hit. Trigger. Rocket it on. Cut the crap. There's work to do. Ha! 
Hostiles in your area are nearly wiped out. Get moving to a more crowded area. Try to catch some more lead. You're giving me another shot? Must be my lucky day. The enemy base is divided into three sections. You did nothing more than destroy just one of them. Why are you acting like some big shot, Count? Haha, <laughs> Traker's the one who did most of the work. Why are you so proud of that, fool man? The bomber has left the AO. Do not pursue. Keep the enemy shooting at you.
convicts. Your time is up. Top brass want you to head back. You'll have a nice time in solitary. Some welcome. All aircraft, spread out and attack. We're clear to attack, right? I heard the regular forces were gonna clean things up. It's just like before. We blow the shit out of everything. Sharp as attack, aren't you, Spare Aid? Regular forces can reduce losses if you tenderize the base first. If you can't handle that, just fly and be a target. <laughs> locations. Some have air power, so their threat levels vary. Think of the best way to rob them of their ability to respond. Use those empty heads of yours. If you die too fast, you won't even be useful as targets. We're being attacked. Enemy aircraft. All squadron. Ready to enter your interceptor. Open fire. Affirmative. We'll do what we can. Missile launched. What are the odds of getting out alive? That's for you to figure out, Spare 7. Regular aircraft that join later needing any repairs or ammo will fly over the return line. However, you guys do not have that luxury. So, what are we supposed to do? Transport truck spotted. Not a threat, but feel free to take them out.
15 blocked. The vehicles have been taken out. Move on to the next target. You're our official fly swatter now, Trigger. Spread out and... 